Knowing what makes a bad story is just as important as what makes a good story, so that you can avoid these mistakes. Let's create a terrible web story together. If for some reason you set out to make a truly awful web story that succeeds in nothing and doesn't help either you or your readers, then you've come to the right episode of Storytime. In reality, of course, I'm simply trying to show you that while it's easy to make a good story, it's just as easy to make a bad one if you aren't careful. So let's make this fun and try our worst. Before diving into design and layout, we need to talk about the storyline of your story. First off, don't put anything interesting on the cover page to not spoil what's on the inside. Nobody likes spoilers. This way, 99% of your readers won't even click on your story, ensuring that only the most hardcore deserving fans make it to page two. You should also reuse all your personal social media stories. Yes, especially that one about what you had for breakfast last Tuesday. This is the best way to guarantee that it is not actually a story with a beginning and an end, but a loose collection of random, unrelated updates. You can, of course, also reuse the blog post that you've written as is by just dumping the paragraphs into individual story pages. You're truly killing two birds with a stone then, as your story won't rely on being awfully long, but also extremely hard to pass. For example, like with any respectable recipe blog post, start with your unrelated scuba diver life story in the first 30 pages before getting to the recipe. If you want to make a short story, then go all in and create a single page teaser story that has no value on its own. That way people must click the link to see what's behind it. It's a deliciously frustrating user experience. When you feel confident that your storyline is truly terrible, then move on to the important topic of topography. To start with, it's a terrible idea to make the text extra small to cram more content onto a single page. So you should definitely do this. And when things still don't fit, then just reduce the line height and letter spacing to cringe-inducing values to fit even more redundant copy. But that makes the story still too easy to read. To keep things fresh and frustrating, you should use at least three different fonts per story page and choose colors that blend in with the background for increased squinting potential. Now that your story is hard to read, it's time to discuss layout. Most important rule here is to go light on images or videos, as they improve your story too much and make it too immersive and engaging. Instead, like with presentation slides, people really hate long bullet point lists, so use them as much as possible. If you have to use an image, scale it down so that it is very hard to see. And to make your layout truly irritating, I encourage you to remove all margins and paddings, as negative space is for losers. Plus, choose different colors on every page and slightly different positions for all elements. But only so slightly, so it doesn't seem intentional. Animations are a great way to make your story feel more immersive, but they're also a capable tool if you want to make your story significantly more annoying. So here are some quick tips. First, you should only use animations that don't add value. Like this extremely useless bounce effect I apply to all elements on the page. They are also a great way to delay the reveal of important content, so use an extra long transition to waste more of your reader's time. You're almost done, but now it's time to talk about optimizations and publishing. Burn in text and captions into your videos so those pesky search engines won't find out what you wrote and definitely don't compress your media so your stories load more slowly. It's also important to remember that while web stories have plenty of features that makes them superior to social stories, you should not use any of them. For instance, don't add any links, don't embed them on your website and definitely don't share the link to the story on social. It's also kind of unfair that these stories don't get deleted after 72 hours so it's best you also delete them manually after that duration. That should do it. I think the resulting story is so terrible that there's no way it will bring joy to just a single reader. Most important of all, do not, I repeat, do not under any circumstances have fun creating stories. And don't subscribe so you don't accidentally make good stories backwards. Mm -hmm.